Hi, this is Joseph from DijoniPhoto.com, and in today's video, I'm going to be attempting to teach you a very complex but important to understand concept in photography, and it's it's called equivalent exposure. Uh, this is a concept where if you can apply this to your photography knowledge, it's really going to help you become a better photographer, and in the long run, it's going to help you be more technical, uh, well, excuse me, more creative by really mastering this very technical skill. Okay, so as we get started, one thing I do want to mention is I'm an amateur educator, so I'm going to do my best to try to explain this in a way that makes sense. But if I am talking slow, uh, consider maybe setting the video to 1.5 or a 2x speed. That way it can just kind of move this along. And if you do decide to come back to the video later on in the future, you can refresh your memory. Also, I'm going to put timestamps in the video. So as you come back later, if you choose to, you can actually fast forward to the places in the video that you want to refresh your memory on. So uh, what is equivalent exposure? And why is it important to photography? Well, the best way that I could define equivalent exposure is it's it's a concept where if you were to take a photo and that picture is at proper exposure equivalent exposure is the ability or the understanding that you can take a second photo with completely different settings and, but you can have those two photos be identical in exposure and one of the best things that we can use to identify proper exposure in our camera is using a histogram. Your camera will have a histogram and if you're not using the histogram you really should be. I believe this is a histogram on the D810 but every camera should have it. This is an RGB histogram where it's basically it's showing you an objective measurement of exposure uh, where we have our dark tones, our mid tones, and our highlights. Uh, to the right, right? So a histogram goes from left to right, from dark to bright. But what I'm getting at is, you know, we, if we take a photo in the field and we confirm that it's a proper exposure through our histogram, we can use equivalent exposure to take a second picture with completely different settings and we can know, like choose those settings at will, but by using equivalent exposure we can know that the second photo is going to have an identical exposure. So basically it saves us from having to troubleshoot and play around with our settings in the field until we stumble upon the correct exposure. So as I just said, equivalent exposure, it's going to let you change your settings on the fly to get an identical exposure. That's what's really great about it. Uh, this is in turn going to allow you, as I said, to take fewer test shots, meaning uh, if you take two separate images and you want the exposures to be identical, you're not going to have to guess on what the settings are going to be. You're going to be able to use this equivalent exposure concept to just get the perfect shot uh, every time. And by perfect, I mean it's going to be properly exposed. This is really important because it allows you to catch uh, fleeting moments of light and color, especially in landscape photography. It'll allow you to catch shots where you might only have one chance to get the image, particularly in landscape photography. It's going to be really foundational in night photography and long exposure photography. I actually think uh, you really are going to have a hard time playing around with night photography or astrophotography if you don't understand equivalent exposure. And as I said before, in the long run, understanding equivalent exposure is going to allow you to be more confident in your photography. So before we go further, let me just run you through a couple images that I have. Uh, that These are photos I used equivalent exposure to capture. So this first one here, this is a photo I took in Iceland. And I was able to capture these beautiful, colorful, streaking clouds kind of stretching across the sky. And the only way I was able to achieve this was through equivalent exposure. Why is that? Well, it's because this was a fleeting moment of color. Uh, as you can see here, 
I had a shutter speed of almost two, a little over two minutes. Uh, but if I didn't use equivalent exposure and I was playing around with my settings to, you know, to, in, in order to achieve the shot, I had to have a long exposure to stretch the clouds after, over the sky, right? But to get that shutter speed, I need to know what my f-stop needs to be set to and what the ISO needs to be set to to have a correct exposure. Otherwise, it could be too bright or too dark. And if I'm playing around with my camera settings, this color is going to fade from the sky and it's going to be gone. Shot's going to be gone. But in the field, I was able to use equivalent exposure to take one shot at, I believe, the, the, IS, the shutter speed was, say, like 1 50th of a second in right and then i had a proper exposure at that at that set at those settings and then i was able to to know like okay i, I want to take another shot at two minutes to stretch these clouds across the sky how am i going to balance my settings to get there well you use equivalent exposure okay here's another one same type of example except this shot is taken over eight minutes so it's an even longer shutter speed, and with a longer shutter speed, when you're catching fleeting moments, uh, you have even fewer chances to get it right. I mean, this is truly an example of a shot where if I got it wrong and tried to take the shot again with different settings, if I was just winging it, I, the color would be gone. I wouldn't have a second chance. But if you use equivalent exposure, then again, you can take a test shot where you have a proper exposure and then you can set diff, uh, setting, different settings in your camera and balance um, the other settings to basically get to a proper exposure. Uh, here's another image <clears throat> where this is a single shot star shot. And if you look, here's the raw photo. So this is a straight image out of camera in here. Here's what it looks like after I edited it. Uh, but as you can see, this image is 2,260 seconds, uh, about 38 minutes long, and this is a single shot. The only way uh, I was able to achieve this, other than winging it with my camera settings and kind of maybe like practicing it, you know, taking a shot, maybe it's overexposed, and then what am I going to do? Take like another 40 minute long shot and maybe you know maybe the next shot is uh, like underexposed or too bright am i just gonna like keep taking 45 minute shots no it's gonna take me all night but if you use equivalent exposure uh what i was able to do is i was able to take a single shot that was properly exposed and then i was able to decide okay now i want my shutter speed to be 38 minutes how do I get there from here? How do I balance my other settings to get that proper exposure? That's where you use equivalent exposure. Last, last example, here's a photo I just took in Norway. And this is actually two separate images that are composited together in Photoshop. Uh, this is the final image, but this is a composite of two images. The first one is, uh, the focus is basically on the sky and I'm using uh, a shorter shutter speed. Well, this is 10 seconds, but this is a shutter speed that I chose to basically capture the definition in the Northern Lights, but I'm using an F 2.8. So as we know with uh, an aperture such as that, we have a shallow depth of field. So I wasn't able to focus on the rock, right? So I took a second shot here where I focused on the rock, uh, but I decided I wanted to have a lower ISO. So the last ISO is at 6,400. So I want to have a lower ISO for the second shot. So I was able to drop my ISO from 6,400 to 1,600, two stops of light, and then use equivalent exposure to balance the camera settings to get in a shot that's identical to the second one. Now, if you look up at the histogram up here in the right, you can see, I mean, these shots are almost identical in the exposure. That's what equivalent exposure is, okay. 
So if this is blowing your mind so far, maybe I should have touched on this before, there is a little bit of prerequisite knowledge to understand this concept. Uh, you don't need to be a pro in all of these areas, but you just have to have a basic understanding because this video, I'm going to try to keep it concise, but it's going to take time to explain these concepts. And these are things that I'm just, I'm not really going to be able to go really deep into. So I need you to really understand the exposure triangle and how that works with photography. Okay, so you really got to have an understanding of ISO, uh, aperture, and shutter speed okay i also need you to understand what a stop of light is now i can just go ahead and define it right here a stop of light if we were to add a stop of light we know that we are doubling the amount of light that we're exposing our image with right or we're going to we're going to have um we're going to have a plus one exposure for adding a stop of light and if we were to take away or decrease a stop of light we're cutting our light in half so to add a stop of light we're doubling it doubling the light coming into the sensor or exposing our image and to take away a stop uh, we're cutting that light in half okay and i also need you to understand how a stop of light plays into the exposure triangle meaning if we have an iso of 500 and we want to increase uh, add a stop of light to our image, you would just need to know what that means. That basically we're going from an ISO of 500 to 1000, or vice versa. If we were to take away a stop of light, we would go from 500 to 250. Okay, so this is just a concept I really need you to understand. Uh, you also need to know uh, manual mode. If you've never used it, you don't need to be a pro in it. But you need to understand basically your dials on your camera and how to function in manual mode. You don't really need to be a pro because at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how there's a really simple trick that's really going to make a lot of this complexity a little meaningless because there's a very simple trick that you're going to be able to use at the end of this video where basically if you can count then you can apply equivalent exposure to all of your images okay so how do we actually apply equivalent exposure this is misspelled sorry about that uh it's a real simple concept basically with equivalent exposure we're we're going to have a starting spot right of where we're going to take an image that is at proper exposure and right here you can see the pretend this is a histogram and this is our beautiful little bell curve on our histogram. Or again, we can go back to an actual histogram and you can see that this is properly exposed. Now again, proper exposure, it's all relative to photography. You might take an image and you, you might want that image to be a little bit underexposed, okay? Or maybe you want it to be a little bit overexposed. But basically, uh, proper exposure, kind of consider this as like the exposure that you want your image to be at okay so we start from a starting point of of that you've taken an image and you like where the exposure is okay equivalent exposure simply means that if we want to change any setting on our camera meaning like if we want to change the f-stop the ISO or if we want to increase or decrease the shutter speed we follow a concept of add a stop leave a stop, right? Or leave a stop, add a stop, okay? It's very simple. So if we're adding a stop of light through any of our exposure triangle settings, f-stop, ISO, or shutter speed, if we're gonna add a stop, we just need to make sure to take a stop away from some other element of the exposure triangle, right? So again, like if we were to increase our ISO, we would perhaps maybe uh, or if we were to lower the ISO, excuse me, we would have to increase the shutter speed or maybe stop down the aperture, right? Because if we were, um, not stop down the aperture, excuse me, I misspoke. Uh, stopping down the aperture would mean we're taking away stop of light, excuse me. So if we were to lower the ISO, we would be taking a stop of light. 
So we would need to add a stop of light and we could add a stop of light by increasing our shutter speed or we could uh, open up our aperture a little bit to let in more light. OK, and that's basically what equivalent exposure is. OK, so now to simplify this, I've created this layout here and we have our F stop. Uh, we have ISO and we have our shutter speed, right? And all of these uh, settings are broken down into one stop increments, right? So we got our F stop, ISO, shutter speed. And then up here in the upper right corner, I have, uh, we're pretending like these are the neutral density filters that we have in our camera bag. And of course, I'm assuming that you know what a neutral density filter is. Uh, that's kind of that's another prerequisite of understanding uh, this concept, right? One thing I do want to touch on a little bit here. Give me one sec. Is f-stop and how some people can get a little bit confused on f-stop, meaning. It's a hard concept to understand how an f2.8 is letting in more light than an f22. It doesn't really make a lot of sense because our brains kind of think f22, that's a larger number. Why is there more light coming in to our camera or exposing our sensor at an f22 as opposed to an f2.8, right? Or why is there less light? Excuse me, I keep misspeaking here. So there's more light coming in at an f22 than at an f2.8, excuse me, versus an f22, okay? Well, here's how you can understand uh, aperture to make this setting just make a lot more sense. Uh, aperture is basically just a fraction of how much your lens opening is, is actually open, right? So when you look at an f2.8, look at it instead as a one over 2.8, or you can simplify it even more and just get rid of the 2.8 and look at an F2.8 as just one over two. Now with that in mind, consider you had an F16, okay? Now if you had two glasses of water and one of those glasses was filled up by half, and the other glass was filled up by a 16th, which glass has the most water in it? Well, obviously it's the one and a half, the F2.8, right? Because fractionally there's more water in a glass that's half full than a glass that's a 16th full. And that is what aperture is, okay? So once someone explained that to me, years ago and after they had explained that i was no longer confused by f-stop okay one more thing before we go into this i could have done this a little earlier but i wanted to bust out a simulator to kind of show you give you a little bit of a visual example of what i mean by add a stop leave a stop okay so this is a camera camera simulator here and you see we have our meter down here. So if we were to take a photo, we see that it's properly exposed. And our settings are an ISO 100, an f-stop of 5.6, and a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second. Okay, if we were to increase our ISO up from 100 to 400, we're increasing this by two stops of light. So if we were to take the photo again, we're two stops of light overexposed, okay? What equivalent exposure is, is again, add a stop, leave a stop. So if we were to add two stops of light through our ISL, well, we could remove two stops of light by either stopping down our aperture or decreasing our shutter sp speed. Okay, so we could go from an F5.6 to an F8 and then to an F11. And now the shot is equivalent. That's what equivalent exposure is. Okay, add a stop, leave a stop, leave a stop, add a stop, okay? 
let's try that again with a different setting. Let's let's take our aperture to a 2.8. Okay, so from an f11, that's uh, one stop of light, two, three, four. So it's four stops of light. Okay, so we've added four stops of light. Let's remove four stops of light. So we can remove two right from our ISL by going from 400 to 200 to 100. Okay, that's two stops of light. We can also, now, now we have two more stops of light we have to take away. We can do that by adjusting our shutter speed. So we could go from 250 of a second to 500 to 1,000. And there we go. That's equivalent exposure. Make sense? So again, we started with a proper exposure that we want, and we were able to adjust our camera settings on the fly to have the second shot be an identical exposure. <clears throat> okay, let's go into some more examples here. So say, say we were on the beach and we we're taking images and we had our proper exposure and that exposure was an f16 with an iso of 100 and a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second right now we took our shot and we have a beautiful bell curve histogram well from here we decide that we want to take a shot of the water kind of streaking in and out the sh on the shore, right? To get that, uh, like a long shutter speed to kind of blur out the water. I really love that effect. So a good place to start is, I mean, we could use, uh, we, we know if we understand photography, we know that we could use maybe a one fourth of a second to get there. Uh, but say we wanted to blur the water out a little more. We want to do something a little more extreme. So we would want to go to maybe uh, a shutter speed of two seconds. Okay. So how would we get there from here? At it from an f16 ISO 100 shutter speed of one two hundred fiftieth of a second. How would we get there? Well, we would know that this would be one stop of light, two stops three stops, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stops of light. Okay, so to adjust our camera settings, we've now added nine stops of light. Okay, now what we could do is we could go into our little toolbox and grab our 10 stop neutral density filter and plop it on the front of our lens. And now we've just removed 10 stops of light. Right, so now we have a one stop deficit. So we added nine stops of light, but we removed 10. So now if we were to take the shot, we would be one stop of light underexposed. Okay, so we need to now add one more stop of light. And we have options here. Uh, we could increase our ISO by one stop or we could open up our aperture by one stop. Either or, it doesn't matter. I would probably choose to open up our aperture a little more. So now our new settings would be an F11, an ISO of 100, shutter speed of two seconds with a 10 stop neutral density filter on our lens. Okay, that's equivalent exposure. Now, that image, say, it looks cool. I mean, we're going to have, the image is going to be identical. We're going to have a nice, identical, beautiful little histogram. But say we wanted to go even further. Say, say we wanted to really, really blur out the motion of that water. We just wanted to vaporize it. So to do that, we decide, you know what, let's go crazy. Let's go to a two-minute shutter speed. Well, how would we get there from here? Our new settings, we're at an F16, ISO 100, shutter speed of two seconds, and we have this beautiful histogram. 
Well, to go to two minutes, we go one stop, two, three, four, five, six stops of light. And just so happens we have a six stop neutral density filter. So in this case, we would only need to add on a six stop neutral density filter because we've added six stops, so we took away six stops. And now we're equal. We're at a nice, beautiful, belly shaped histogram. Okay. One thing to keep in mind is when you're stacking neutral density filters on each other like this, you're probably going to get a little bit of vignetting in the corner of your uh, of your frame. So just be in my, uh, keep that in mind. You might need to increase your focal length a little bit or just correct it in post. But that's just a little aside there. Okay, now these are our new settings. F16, ISO 100. We have 16 stops of new of uh we're removing 16 stops of light through our neutral density filter what if we wanted to go to 16 minutes okay so to go from two minutes to 16 minutes with all things being equal this would be a one stop two stop three stop increase right so we need to stop down our lens three times mm. And this is where we would actually run into a little bit of a problem because the only way to do that now, we're kind of stuck. Uh, we only have two stops of light that we can work with here, okay? Because we, we could only stop down from an F16 to an F22. And unless you had an ISO of 64, you would be stuck. So I guess this isn't the greatest example in the world uh, because we really don't have much, uh, we don't have a good place to go. You really don't want to shoot at an F-22 because you're going to be getting diffraction. But if you needed to, you could. Um, one option is if you were down by one stop of light, your ISO has those high and low settings that you can use. And if you really, really wanted to get that shot, you could maybe stop down to an F22, uh, 16-minute shutter speed, and maybe go down to like a low two of an ISO, and you would be able to capture that shot, okay? But that's equivalent exposure. Now, let's take a look at some of our photo examples. Uh, we probably don't need to go into this as an example this is a two stop uh, excuse me a two minute shutter speed so when I was in the field um, I'm saying we don't need to go into it so let's go into it a little bit <laughs> let's see I'm at an f11 and an ISO of 64 and a two minute shutter speed uh, so let's see here are our settings ISO 64. Sorry about that. Basically, when I was in the field, if I wanted to get to a two-minute two-minute shutter speed, I I mean this I took this shot years and years ago, but I believe I used a six-stop filter. So my ISO, my shutter speed, excuse me, one, two, three, four, five, six, was probably somewhere around here, or it could have been even lower. But basically, in the field, just say for example. Say, for example, I take the shot and I'm at an F8, a 100 ISO, and I'm at a 1 in 30 second shutter speed. Okay, if I know that I want to get to a 2 minute shutter speed, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 stops of light. Okay, so in that event, again, the light is changing rapidly. I, I might only have one chance to get this image. So I take a test shot and I have a nice proper exposure. These are my settings. But I know that I want to get to a two minute shutter speed. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Is that right? 12 stops, right. So what I can do on the fly is I can pop a 10 stop neutral density filter 
on my lens. And then from here, I, all I have to do is, let's see, I am now, let's see, well, let's use this concept. So I have added 12. Now I need to take away 12. So I added on a 10-stop neutral density filter. I'm in a two-stop light deficit, so I need to stop down by two stops. So I can just go from an F8 to an F16. Boom. Take the shot, two minutes, F16, ISO of 100, and you're going to get that perfect shot. Okay. An image like this, I'm in the field, and... This is an ISO of, let's see, so this image is an f-stop of 2.8, an ISO of 64, and da, 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 that was a 10 second shutter speed, okay. Uh, to make this simple, let's just say it's a 15 for the sake of argument. Okay, so again, in this event, I captured my northern lights. I captured the sky. I was happy with that, so I focused on the rock, and I decided, okay, I want to. I, I now want to take a lower ISO shot, so I'm going to drop my ISO down to 1600. Okay, so. I have now decreased two stops of light, so I need to increase it by two stops. So simply, I could go from 15 seconds to 30 to one minute here. And now that's going to be an equivalent exposure. In the field, I don't know why I didn't do this, but I could have even gone down lower. I could have even gone down to an ISO of 800 to have an even lower level of noise and now there's just a one stop deficit right so i removed a stop of light through my iso but i added a stop of light through my shutter speed that's equivalent exposure it's good stuff it's a great concept if you learn this it's just it, you're gonna have so much more fun with your photography it's it might be confusing now it might be complicated but i'm telling you if you practice this concept and if this just becomes something that you do as second nature, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. You're going to have so much fun with your photography. And it's going to make you more creative because you're going to learn all of these settings and how you can artistically like apply these settings to get some really, really neat shots. So I'm going to try to wrap it up here. Uh, I do want to show you this photo, the star shot, right? Because this is a little bit more advanced. Now you're talking about... Uh, a shot that's much much longer okay how do you how in the heck do you figure out the settings on a shot like this well I was in the field and I knew I wanted to take a star shot where they spiral so you compose you find the North Star and you know okay if I have around a 40 minute shot that should be long enough to where I'll get these really cool spirals in the star so here's the process I use for that when I'm in the field, uh, what some people do is when they're doing a star shot, they will actually come out during the day or dusk. They'll frame up their shot and they'll leave their camera there and then come back at night to actually take the shot. Because their, their idea is, is, well, I need to be there during the day so I can see what I'm doing. I don't want to do that. I don't want to just wait around for hours. I don't want to set my camera up and leave and come back. So what I do instead is I use a ridiculously high ISO. Uh, my camera goes as high as uh, 200,000 ISO, which is completely unusable unless you use it in a situation like that. So what I do is I go out in pitch dark. Uh, I might scout the location during the day just to, you know, I have a general idea of where I want to go. I find that during the day. I set a GPS coordinate. I come back at night. And now I set my, uh, my ISO as high as it can go. And I open up my lens as wide as it can go. And now I use these settings because if I use the lower ISO, 
each shot I'm going to take might be like 15, 30 seconds or a minute. But if I have this really ridiculously high ISO, I might be able to take a shot at perhaps one second. So having a one second shot that I can use to compose my image or find proper exposure is much, much easier than a 30 second shot. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that's ba that's basically it, uh, because so, so when you're in the field, again, you're going to use the same concept of your first shot is used to find your proper exposure. So in the field, I'm going to have my ISO set real high. My F stop is all the way open. And now I'm going to play around with my shutter speed until I find that proper exposure using my histogram in pitch dark. And again, going back to the histogram. You should always, always be using this, but especially in night photography. If you're not using your histogram in night photography, the images, if you just look at the images on your LCD, they're going to look great to your naked eye because your eyes are adjusted to the dark. But when you get them home to your computer, you're going to be stunned to see, damn, like these images are two, three, four stops underexposed. They look way too dark to even recover. It's because you didn't use your histogram. So use this all the time, but especially at night. But I'm going to play around with my settings until I find that proper histogram. And now I'm going to drop my ISO down to a place that works better. So say I wanted to go to 6400. On my camera, a D850, a 6400 still looks pretty good. So that's one, two, three, four five stops of light okay so i've just removed five stops of light i now need to add five stops of light so i'll do that through my shutter speed one two three four five and this is perfect because this brings us to 30 seconds now when you're doing a shot that you want to extend past 30 seconds into eight minutes, 16 minutes, 36 or more, you really, this is where um, the, the technique changes a little bit. Because what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to get to the point where you find your proper exposure at 30 seconds. You basically wanna take a test shot at 30 seconds. Because just, just to be safe, like if you understand this concept, you you can really compensate your exposure as far as you want it to go and you're going to it's going to be accurate but it's just a good idea that if you're going to go much farther past a 30 second shutter speed you want to take a test shot at 30 seconds okay so from where we were before our new settings are now an f 2.8 an iso 6400 at a 30 second long shutter speed now if I wanted to go to 36 minutes, that is one, two, three, four, five, six stops. So now I am in my new exposure. This is our new one. I have added six stops of light. So I need to take away six stops. Well, the only place we can, well, we have two stop. We have two, two choices. We can either go ISO or we can go F stop. ISO is clearly the better option. We'll have a lower lower noise image. So let's remove six stops from my ISO. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. So now our new settings are an F 2.8, an ISO of 100. And if we were to take a photo for 36 minutes long, then that exposure is going to be identical to what it was before, guaranteed. One thing to keep in mind is what you, you can always look at, look at stops of light from a fractional standpoint, meaning if you are at 36 minutes, right? Half of a stop of light at 36 minutes would be what, my math is really bad, but that would be what, like 18 minutes? right something around there so just keep in mind that if you were to go like if you were at 
75% of the stop of light, that would be something like, my math is bad, but that would be something like, like 30 minutes or 32 minutes or maybe a little less. But the point is, is if all of these settings were the same, F2.8, ISO of 100, and you need a 36 minute uh, shutter speed in order to get that proper exposure, if you were to take your shot for just like 33 minutes or 34 minutes, it's only going to be underexposed by a small amount. Uh, conversely, if you were to go over by a cut like two or three minutes or even five minutes, at this point, once you're at 36 minutes, another stop, full stop of light. So to to double the amount of light coming into your sensor, you would be at uh, that. That's an hour and four minutes. Okay, so that means. If you were to go over by like five minutes, you're really only letting in a smaller amount of light. Okay, so that's a concept of stops. Like as you get to these longer shutter speeds, you need to have your lens open for a lot longer in order to expose your image by a full stop of light, if that makes sense. Okay, now one more crazy example. So we know that in our previous image, our f-stop is at a 2.8, right? Our ISO is a 100, and we're at a 36-minute shutter speed. What if I wanted to go to a ridiculously high shutter speed of like 10 hours, okay? Well... We could do that. We could take a single shot and have it just be super, super long, have an all night long shot and know that it's going to be properly exposed using equivalent exposure. So if we were at a 36 minute shutter speed, if we were to increase that by one stop of light, that would actually be, it's, a, it's an hour and 13 minutes. So that's plus one. If we were to go plus two, plus three, plus four, the next stop from here is a plus two. Two extra stops of light from 36 minutes would be 288 minutes or two hours and 24 minutes. You could say two hour, two and a half hours, right? Because again, those six minutes is really not going to overexpose your image by hardly anything when you're getting to that point. That's like like a, a fraction of a stop of light at that point, okay? Three stops of light would be now four hours and 50 minutes, or you could just say five hours. Uh, and then finally, four stops of light would get you up to nine and a half hours. So if we were at an F2.8, ISO of 100 and a 36 minute shutter speed, we would just take all of those settings and leave our camera open for nine and a half hours. And when we came back in the morning, in theory, the image would be exposed. But this actually brings up a very important point. I kind of stumbled on this and I have this written down here. This brings up a potential problem with equivalent exposure, something you need to look out for, and that is changing light, okay? This concept only works as long as the light is constant. So if you're taking the shot during sunrise or sunset and the sun is poking up over the horizon as you're taking a nine hour long shot, it's, it's going to blow your whole shot because if you're going to be increasing the amount of light coming into your scene much faster as the sun's rising. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, also, like if the sun's setting and you're taking a shot, like if you're taking a shot as the sun is setting uh, and it's a very, very long shutter speed, you could ex overexpose your image slightly by a third of a stop or 25%. So say you're taking a shot at sunset, sun is going down over the horizon and you're taking like an eight minute long shot. 
you could maybe add like an extra minute onto your exposure time or 30 seconds and you would probably you'd only be letting in a small amount of light because again like the light stops work fractionally when you're getting up to these high shutter speeds okay you can add in like one minute and that is only one minute of eight minutes is i don't know it's like maybe maybe 15 20 percent something like that so that's just something to keep in mind but also remember it's always better to underexpose your image anyways um so i don't know just keep that in mind like if if you had a choice it's you're better off to underexpose your image anyways than to risk overexposing your image and having a blown highlight. Another thing you need to keep in mind when you're doing equivalent exposure is if you're using a DSLR, cover your viewfinder. The reason for that is because light can come in through the viewfinder and it somehow it exposes your sensor in a way where it creates this really weird artifact. And I'll show you that here. This is a photo I took. I took a trip to Colorado and this was actually the only interesting photo I got for a three day trip to Colorado. And as you can see, I screwed this up because I left my viewfinder open. So it created this weird uh, artifact in my image. This also goes into the idea of only having one chance to get a shot because this was 784 seconds. What is that? That's like 15 minutes. So this was a 15 minute long shot. Uh, I was able to capture the clouds kind of streaking across the sky. But when I looked at the, the finished image and it was kind of screwed up, I figured, oh, okay, I closed my uh, viewfinder up and took the shot again, but it was gone. The next shot didn't look this good. The light was all gone. It just, it looked bad. So that's an example of only sometimes having one chance to get the shot. Okay. Wrapping it up here for real this time. Uh, just to bring this concept home, I did a test shot here. Uh, this beautiful shot, I'm being sarcastic, from my, uh, my bathroom where I took this in almost pitch dark. I actually, well, it was pitch dark, but to get the shot properly exposed, uh, the image would have been two minutes long at proper exposure. So I actually had to open the door to my bathroom to let in a little bit of ambient light. But here you can see I have an ISO of 25,000, an f-stop of 2.8, and an eight second shutter speed, okay? What I did from there is I brought down my ISL by two stops and I compensated my shutter speed by 30 seconds. Then I also, oh, excuse me, then I, I brought my ISO down even more, but I compensated my ISL to just under two minutes. So let's go back to these settings and I'll show you them on our, on our board here. Let's refresh this. So my settings were f2.8, 25,000, and what did we say? It was, yeah, eight seconds. Okay. So I decreased my ISL by two stops, negative two. We're going to add two. Adding two from here is bloop, bloop, 30 seconds. Okay. And then that's the equivalent exposure as we can see here. So 25,000, look at, up at this histogram up in the upper right hand corner. And you can see between these two shots, the histogram, it changes slightly. Just be, it pro that probably has something to do with uh, just the conditions. Like there's probably like a little more ambient light in the room, I don't know. But more or less, it's almost identical, okay? From here, I decreased it even more by two stops and I added two stops, so we're at two minutes here. And that is equivalent exposure. Now, all of this is probably sounding pretty confusing, okay? But there is a trick that makes this easy, easy to understand. It's, I call it the click trick, okay? Let me just correct this here. 
the click trick is it's so simple all it is is you just need to understand it like this uh whoops oh i'm so sorry i had this image pulled up before okay sorry so here's the click trick as you know your camera has a dial and this camera uh, this dial adjusts your exposure depending on the setting that you have it set to right uh, so if you have your I have my click wheel set where if I click to the right it adds exposure okay or adds stops of light and if I click to the left it decreases stops of light so if I have it set to my aperture and I'm at 2.8 and I click to the right it's not going to do anything because if my if my max aperture is a 2.8 there's nowhere else for it to go but if I were to click to the left it's going to stop down my lens from a 2.8 to 5.6 to an 8 and so on okay now what's really cool is there is a feature or at least in my camera it should be in most cameras where you can adjust this dial to where each click can control your exposure by either a third of a stop a half a stop or a full stop now I personally have mine set to a third stop so what that means is is if I if I'm at an ISO and I click this wheel three times three-thirds of a stop equals a whole stop so if I'm at an ISO of 100 and I click, click, click to the right three times, I'm going to go from an ISO uh, 100 to an ISO 200, right? That's a full stop of light. And if I'm at an ISO of 200 and I click, click, click to the left, I'm going to decrease my exposure and go from an ISO 200 to an ISO 100. So basically what this means if we were to look at our chart it's very simple again as i said before if you know how to count you're going to know how to apply equivalent exposure if i'm at let's go back to our beach example okay we're at an f16 we're at an iso of 100 and let's just say let's say we're at a shutter speed of 1 15th of a second and I want to get to a shutter speed of two seconds well we would just click 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 to the right to add exposure so it's one click 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 two click 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 three click 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 four click 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 five all right so that's five stops of light okay so now again we we could pop on a neutral density filter okay so we've now added five stops of light we popped on a neutral density filter so now we're at a one stop deficit okay so now we actually we've you know we've removed one stop of light more than what we need so we need to add a stop of light well let's just go to our f stop and click 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 to the right which as we know in our ISO in this case is actually going to push the setting to the opposite setting because we know uh, a 1 16th is less light than a 1 11th okay so what's even cooler about this is this is uh, something I've done recently is you can you can set this to a full stop and in, at least in my camera they have uh, what's called shooting banks uh, they, you can basically set specific camera settings to a bank that you can then easily access. And I set my dial to each click represents a full stop. And that bank, all I have to do is click that and I could call it like exposure, equivalent exposure. And now rather than having like 20 clicks to, you know, add six stops of light it's only going to be six clicks you know what i'm saying so that makes it way easy makes it very very simple to understand so the click trick uh
couple more things until I leave, uh, until I drop this video off. Um, if you want to practice this skill, the best thing you can do is go out and do some night photography. I mean, you could even do dark photography from the comfort of your own home. Like, do what I did. Go into your bathroom or turn the lights off and start playing around with your camera settings. Uh, bump the ISO up, open up your f-stop as high as it can go, and play around with your shutter speed until you can find a proper exposure. And once you get that exposure, drop your ISO down by five stops and use equivalent exposure to now add five stops of light, and you're going to see how easy it works. And use the click trick. It makes, makes it much, much simpler. But again, this is a concept where if you fully understand this, it's for me personally, once I started doing this, I felt like my photography increased dramatically. You're able to get some really awesome shots if you understand this concept. Last thing that I'm going to touch on before we go, and it's just I'd like to recommend some neutral density filters. If you've never had them before, uh, for a long time, I used screw on neutral density filters uh, and they're great and all, but recently I learned about magnetic neutral density filters and these things are just the bee's knees. Once you use a magnetic neutral density filter, you're never going to be able to go back to a screw on if you've ever used one. Uh, basically, so these are case filters. I'll go into why I like these in a second, but basically it's just a ring that you uh, screw onto your lens and now all you have to do is pop these on with the magnet i mean these are magnetic so you just pop them on and boom you've got you know you have like uh you can d decrease your uh stops of light by you know i mean whatever <laughs> filter <laughs> i'm screwing this up well, you get what i'm saying by whatever uh strength of filter you're using so this case uh this fill this set excuse me has a filter set of uh 10 uh six stop and a three stop filter also a circular polarizer and it is 300 bucks but i highly highly recommend it this is the filter kit that i would recommend uh one thing that i really like about this filter kit is the lens cap so like the 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 normal Nikon lens caps actually fit onto the filters themselves, which is really, really important. This kit comes with this magnetic filter, but it tends to fall off the lenses, which sucks. And uh, I tried a couple different magnetic filter kits, and this was the only one that I could find where the actual lens cap will clip onto the filter itself. So that concludes the education. I hope it was useful. It went on for a while. But again, if you practice this stuff, it's highly, highly worth it. So I hope that was helpful and I hope you have a good day. Peace.